I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fangs, claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they can be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. The worst part about being adult is I no longer have a frame of reference for anything. Oh, yeah. Well, I got stuck behind a school bus the other day, and I was like, what's this bullshit? Where'd this come from? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the nice uh, thing about adulting is you can just have ice cream and tequila for dinner, and no one can say anything. I, Brandon, if you told me you were in the process of having ice cream and tequila, I would say anything. <laughs> I would say something. I'm I would not. be like, Brandon... I'm having onion rings, but... Well, I can understand having onion rings because you've got leftovers and mm-hmm. you're eating the leftovers. I get that. That's that's standard adulting pr- procedure right there. I have so many leftovers. It's fantastic. Got chicken wing leftovers, onion ring leftovers, steak leftovers, sushi leftovers. I've got a thing of edamame. Oh, I want edamame now. All right, I know I'm having for lunch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, leftovers are just the greatest. Ever. No, they're pretty good. They're they're pretty good. I'm bad with leftovers though because yeah. I get lazy, and sometimes I don't feel like dealing. Oh, I just eat everything me. cold. Oh well, that if you if you're just eating everything cold, that's the that's the the come up, I guess. Yeah, yeah. No, everything. I just had cold chicken wings, having cold onion rings for breakfast. It's great. Oh God. Mm-hmm. Uh, so did you see the sad news? No, it's, it's not. It's it's sad in the uh, just general sense. Not sad as in like something bad happened. Yeah. Um. Uh. What you call it? Bruce Green is leaving Funhouse. No. He left. He left Funhouse actually. By the time what? this episode's out. For yeah. what? What are his future endeavors? Um. He's doing streaming now for himself. So. Everybody's doing that. So like. Um, Uber Nova Hacksaw just left uh, Cow Chop to do his own streaming stuff. Mm-hmm. And I guess Bruce is leaving to do streaming stuff. Uh, Brian Man left to do his streaming stuff. Like, I don't... Ray beat them all. Yeah, well, he's Brown Man. Ray, right. yeah. Yeah. Oh, is he? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean... I'm gonna miss him. Oh, yeah. No, 100%. Because he's a man after my own heart. Mm-hmm. He, he loves Ska. He seems like a golden retriever stuck in a man's body. Yes. Uh-huh. And that's why he's great. No. Oh, he's he's phenomenal. He's definitely one of my favorite internet personalities right now. Oh, yeah. He's he's definitely in the top ten. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I was kind of sad the, the when I saw The top nine are born. The top... <laughs> the, <laughs> he's, he's number what? ten. The top nine are all porn. Sorry. I thought it was funny in my head. I get it. I get the joke. You're yeah. roasting on me. I'm roasting on me, too. I, I'm roasting just people in general. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. That's that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. I, I don't know what is going on with me right now, but I'm no, just what's like going in on? this... I'm like in this general fugue state. I've been in it for a while now, and... There's so I don't know what's going on with me, but it's very different and it's bowel related. Uh, well, that that I I get actually. Where I'll be like, mm, I think I have to go, and then I don't. But then I'll be, I'll be like a whole day where I'm like, oh, I'm working on something, and then I go, and you're like, it's kind of a letdown. That's uh, way smaller than I was expecting. I thought it was going to be a thing of legends, and um, it's basically a chicken nugget. Every time I go to the bathroom, it's what. Legendary. <laughs> you ever have a ghost? I had a couple of ghosts recently. A ghost poo? Yeah, when well, you sit down and you think you have to poop, but it's just a fart. Yeah, I've had ghosts. Yeah. Ghosts do happen. Yeah, ghosts happen. It's a thing. It, yeah, and also, anytime you experience a cold spot, it's a ghost. Doesn't yes. It doesn't have to be a ghost cold spot. It's just a ghost. There's always ghosts. Everything's ghosts. Or just like a cold you, spot on the bed. What's up? 
especially if you're from America, uh-huh. did you know that America is built on top of an Indian burial ground? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, John, you're a bad person. <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel bad about that joke now. Uh, it was good, though. Yeah. Because it's, it's upsettingly true. Yeah. I, I've been listening to the, the Mormonism episode of... of uh, on Rack? No, not On Rack. Um, oh, Last Pod? Uh, last Podcast, yeah. and... It's upsetting the things that we did to Native Americans. Oh, yeah. We're not good people. We're bad. Yeah. Just in general. Like, I know I didn't do anything, but I still feel bad. I feel bad. Like, I didn't do anything, but that doesn't mean I can't not feel bad about yeah. what happened. Did you? Uh, I know, I'll, talk, I'll I'll bug you about this later. Well, I'll Skype you. In, well, the, uh, let's see. You hear the dollop epis. Where boop? Also, I type in all caps because I work in engineering. Are you, yeah. are you serious? Yeah. He's not. No. Oh. Someone say Italian. <laughs> That's the most fucking American thing ever. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> oh, geez. If anyone wants to know what we're talking about, listen to the dollop episode, whatever. Just hear them all. And you'll be like, what the fuck? <laughs> I just uh. feel an overwhelming sadness. I listened to the... Epi- the the reverse dollop yeah um where gareth reynolds does yeah. the research um on what was it i don't know There's tommy cooper tommy cooper okay yeah tommy cooper the guy who died on stage yeah and no one realized he died in the audience because mm-hmm. he the way he died was the most in line with his act ever yeah like He's got a weird story. Yeah. Listen to the, the reverse dollop on it. That's all I can say. There's, I mean, I'm not going to do it dollop style, but like manufacturing day is coming up and I have to give three presentations to different schools. Um, that'll be interesting. That'll be fun. I'm the I, representative I've... of my department for oh, manufacturing God. day. <laughs> and it's like, y'all made a bad decision, but I'm so down for it. I'm so good at public speaking. You know, what's weird. Yeah. Um, when I was, uh, so I, I did a bunch of presentations to college aged kids, Yeah, which is weird to call them kids, but I will say this. I stand by calling college age people kids because you I can. saw a freshman, I saw a freshman the other day in target and he was like, yep, college student. I'm like, you look like you're three to me. They have kids that are fresh out of college that they just hired at work. And I'm like. Oh, we have toddlers now. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just like, what the hell? Yeah. What is reality? Mm. What is what is this this fiction I found myself in? Yeah. <sighs> Anywho, I had to give presentations to college kids. And the fun story is my department didn't know I was already looking for new work. Oh. So yeah. I was giving presentations about our department while looking to leave our department that's pretty funny yeah i actually so i was actually in charge of that program yeah wait the program of giving the presentation or the program that you were talking about uh giving the presentations okay um and i actually pulled us out of some presentations yeah because i legitimately felt bad about pulling people into my department oh that's like funny. I felt, I felt legitimately guilty mm-hmm. about it. So I was like, I don't, I don't want to tell people to join us because, like, I feel bad because it's not a fun place. Yeah, and I don't, I don't want to lie to the kids. Yeah, I mean, luckily, like the thing I'm doing, it doesn't. I mean, it's gonna be specific to what I do. Yeah, because that's what I do. 
but I don't think I have to. Con- I'm not trying to convince anyone to join the department itself, which yeah. is good. But this, like, also, like, I've been carrying our whole department for like the last four weeks and been annoyed about it, and it's pretty great because I don't hide anything. So I've been getting free food for so long. That's awesome. It's fantastic. Like, I, I got some gift certificates to um the bars I like. And then also, like, I just get free lunch. Because they're mm-hmm. like, oh, he's just carrying everybody. And he's annoyed by it, so. <laughs> let's make let's, him happy. Let's, let's, let's keep him not happy. Tolerable. Yes. Let's keep him tolerable. Because when, well, when I'm in get shit done mode, that yeah. means I'm pounding coffee and annoyed at everybody. And I will not hide any of that. <laughs> so like I'll fit I'll wrap something and I'll be like thank you and they're called um we have a restaurant inside the building where I work so they get so they they call them wooden nickels they're like these coins and all that stuff but basically mm-hmm. like, you just give it to the restaurant and it's like okay your food's on whoever gave you these these tokens yeah so I've just been doing that <laughs> now here's the question yeah if they're wooden tokens mm-hmm can you feasibly are they woodcut? How are they how are they made? Oh no, I could replicate them. 100%. Okay. I also don't want to get fired. That's true. Cuz like they're strict about shit where I work in That's weird fair. ways. So I just don't want to get fired. Yeah, no, that that's that's a lesson for everyone. Yeah, uh, like, if you can av- <laughs> Did you fake a piece of wooden circle? Get out of here. Like they uh, that would 100% have happened. That's such a bizarre... Th- like, I know what my mind went there, but that would be such a bizarre thing to get fired for. Oh, you can it's get like, fired what? over letting someone in through the wrong door. I could see that, though. Yeah. That, that... Well, the the type of work that you do, I could definitely see that one. I have... Let, let, me, I, I, let me find this email uh, uh, that I sent. Um, let's see. Gmail. Because there's literally... Like, it's fun. I can't show you the whole document, but I can show you a portion of a document. Uh, so let me... Can I... Can I uh, I'm so bad at technology, and it sounds... It's weird that I'm bad. Um, to J... I'm not going to say your actual email. Um, I'm uh, going to delete some other uh, things that are attached, but... You're about it, it, to receive, and, like, the actual, like, destroy this document after uh, using it uh, thing. God. My uh, my email is an open secret, by the way. Oh, is it an open secret? Yeah. I. If you go to John Unham Games, yeah. you can access me. Because yeah. that's my, that's literally my brand, so yeah. to speak. And I get so many garbage emails now. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, so I, I hate uh, my website. You hate your website. Yeah, I redesigned it, and I don't like the redesign. Oh, I got you. Like, yeah, it's not it's not ideal, but mm-hmm. it's one of those things where it's like, oh, whatever. I don't really care because most most jobs I'm applying to these days aren't looking at my websites anymore. Yeah. So the thing I just sent you, by the way, is if you have a uh, classified document, mm-hmm. there's a notice on it, and also. Inside <laughs> that notice, it describes the the uh, Department of Defense standard for approved ways of destroying documents. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like how close you and I are to, like... Oh, things? Things. Yeah. Now, I, and that's not like a riff at you or I. Oh, yeah. It's more of, I've known you since high school, middle school. We've known each other for so, like, there are people who I've met only through you who I still know today where I've blown out my voice screaming at them during LAN parties in your parents' basement. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) The, um, but, like, it's horrifying to me that someone I've known for that long who I can still imagine as being a middle school student... Oh yeah, has that level of access? <laughs> I still think that about myself. I'm like, do you guys know I, who you're giving this to? Uh, yeah, I have yeah. Brandon. Brandon, <laughs> I worked on a Department of Energy project. Yeah, like 
I literally worked on the fastest supercomputer in the world at the time of recording. Yeah. Like. Yeah. <laughs> I've worked on things I still can't talk about having worked on. <laughs> yeah. For like things. Oh, oh, Brandon, <laughs> I'm working on stuff right now that I can't talk about. Yeah. Because I moved over to, to a storage base thing. Yeah. And we do storage for like the weirdest stuff that you would never expect. Yeah. Like I, I just it. found out, I found out that we're doing a uh, storage for something that, uh, you probably you like most of our listeners probably use it every day, oh. and I can't talk about it. Poopery, huh? Poopery, yeah. The it's before poo-pourri. you poo spray. I use that yeah, all the I time. Do, I, I do storage for poopery. Uh huh. But yeah, so it's horrifying. It's mm. a horrifying thought, because. Here's oh, yeah. the real here's the real secret. I don't think I should be allowed to access anything. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think I think the most startling realization that I've ever had is that being an adult isn't about knowing the a- answers. It's about pretending you know the answers. Oh yeah. That's 100% of adulting. It's not knowing the answer. It's just knowing a little bit more of the answer than anybody else in the room. Yep. Uh-huh. And it's it's a nightmarish thought to think of. Like, I'll be given documents <clears throat> that have different notices and shit on them. And I'll be like, they don't know that last night, I just had me and a friend over, and I put on videos for cats, and then we watched my cat watching videos for cats while laughing and drinking. Like, I'm like, mm-hmm. you got, you're giving this to me right now? Right now you're giving this to me? This is too much responsibility. Like, I, I'll do it, and I'll do it better than anybody else in this <laughs> building can do it. But you guys don't know what I do in my free time. No, and they can never know. No. Assuming they don't listen to the podcast. And if they do, congrats. Yeah. You did the thing. You, you earned it. So, at this point, with a mouth full of onion rings mm-hmm. and a glass full of water, let me hey, say... Hey, listen. Yeah. Last week, I was I was not last week. Two weeks ago, me and that me me and that pop tart had a date. There's oh okay, so I told you about eating Applebee's in bed the uh, last night, mm-hmm. which I guess for the listeners would be a week and a day ago. Mm-hmm. But there's also some Sour Patch Kids involved. I'm just gonna say that someone who is not me, like I shifted a little bit and exposed. Loose Sour Patch Kids. And I just hear, ooh, Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> like, she just started eating. <laughs> just, I died. I died on the spot. I was like, do you re- realize what you just did? God like, damn it. Just like, it was the whole, like, ooh, and just, like, so much excitement over finding, like, candy that we didn't know was there. And it was the funniest thing. I never seen in my life. Ah, God damn it. So welcome to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week, we'll take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John. <laughs> Woohoo! And this week's creature is humanoid in appearance. It is, uh, it's very ambiguous as far as its first sighting date. It's seen all over, but is most popular on the western side of the United States, and it is still seen today. Do you have any guesses on what it could be? I was going to guess Mike, but... Oh, uh, on your rings. Okay. But the the western side of the country is the the killer there. Um, That is, yeah. hmm. I don't think it's Sasquatch, because there is... It's not a big feat. Yeah, it, it's because Sasquatch has a pretty, um, a pretty defined starting date. Yeah. So, I don't know. I actually don't know this one again. So today we're talking about shadow people. God damn it! So <sighs> literally I want... something that you said that I should do like three weeks oh, ago. Oh my god! I just want to point out. Yeah. When I was younger, when I was like thirteen, it was scary this was shit. Legitimately, the scariest yeah. thing in the world to me. It was so scary. I'm not like that's why you, as soon as you said it, I was like, yes, 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 yes. He doesn't know it, but this is the next copy I'm gonna write. This was the scariest thing in the world to me. Like, 
I remember reading these stories during yeah. the daytime and then being scared for the rest of the day. They had that on, like, I don't know if it was Ghost Hunters or Taps or whatever, but it was so scary. And I, I remember, I remember... Them setting up, like, a laser grid over a bridge and all this other mm-hmm. stuff just, oh, like, it was legit scary when I was younger. Well, and also, like, none was... of that shows up. So, yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah. No, it doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. No. It's no fucking sense whatsoever. No. It, it, if you take a critical lens to any of the stories that I've heard, at least, and I don't know, most of it is nonsense, but I'll let you. Oh, yeah. I mean, we'll we'll do a dive. We'll do a dive. I mean, that's, yeah. what, that's what we're here for, and that's what whoever made the poor decision of listening to this is here for. I'm sorry. You're beautiful. Fantastic individual. Keep listening. We do love you. Know you. What? Yeah. We have a Patreon. We love you. We love yeah. you. We love well, you. Let's 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 not be aggressive with our love. Okay, right. I got you. I got you. We gotta play it cool. We gotta play it cool. All right, we'll be it cool. We'll we'll buy them some flowers first. We'll uh uh, uh, uh hibachi. We'll take them to hibachi. That's a way you pronounce hibachi. And then we'll uh, chloroform them. So, well, Brandon, Brandon, yeah, sorry, what's up? Dial it back. Dial it back. Dial Ooh, it back. We've had different first dates, clearly. Uh, yeah, apparently. Yeah. Um, no, no chloroform. No chloroform on the first date. Okay, GHB, you got it. Well, no, 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 no. Also, no, no, I no, shouldn't no, no. say that as a joke because that sh- is legit around. Is it? Has it been like, at least in Uptown, that's like hardcore around. Really? Yeah. One of oh, my bo- shit. Like, I want. I went to uh, just have like salad. At, at uh, I don't want to say the name. I don't want to get anybody in trouble. But like, yeah, my butter chain came up and he was like. Uh, so you just want like your salad, a little piece of brisket, and and uh, like a, a beer or something? So, oh, he said, oh yeah. And then he, they lean over the bar. He goes, so I got roofied last night. And I was like, what? He goes, yeah, over. And he's naming over the place, but that's not the first time someone's been like this happened to me. A dude, like just yeah, yeah. It was I, well, you wouldn't if I even said his name, you wouldn't know him. Yeah. But so that person got uh, roofied, and then like there's a few other spots where like I'll hear about it. Where, like, someone got hit with the GHB, and then everyone's also good in the area as well. Like, it sounds super sketch, but um, yeah. as soon as that happens, the, the basically, the tenders, owners, or people who are regulars at other bars then go to all of those spots and say, keep an eye out for this, this is what this person looks like, and all, like, so everyone, like, like gets together, but at the, to, like, tame yeah, that, yeah. but also you're like, wow, like, I didn't realize, like, like that that's just around that's horrifying <clears throat> yeah like that's actually scary it is that's that's more scary than like i'm more afraid of that than i am of a serial killer getting me are you though cuz that won't kill you yeah but it can put you in a bad situation it can now to yeah i'm not getting and into also, it so, but yeah 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 that's it's there's a lot to that yeah that, that's that's a can of worms I'm not going to touch. There, there's a can of worms already... with things that people have told me in confidence that I'm not getting into. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 within. Yeah, let's let, let's move away from that. Yeah. So a shadow person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We went well, we went dark, and now let's get darker. Dark? No, I well, mean made it's of shadow. Like it's, they're made, made of shadow. shadow. Yeah. That's the most dark you can get, I guess. Yeah. So a shadow person, also known as a shadow figure, a shadow being, or black mass, is the perception of a black shadow as living humanoid figure, particularly as interpreted by believers in the paranormal or supernatural as the presence of a spirit or entity. Is it? Yes. Hmm. I mean, that's I mean that's how they described it. Shadow people, they're people's made of shadows. Okay. That's how I would describe it. We don't need that crazy paragraph to describe anything like that. Yeah. <clears throat> so from... Av- Av- Avila Beach uh, through St. Louis Obispo and all the way up to Monterey or it's the Santa Lucia Mountains. Uh, lurking within these mountains are the strange and mystifying Dark Watchers, which I believe is the origin of what we now are uh, Shadow People. Is it? So that's yeah, so like... Shadow People's like a blanket statement from all around, but the Dark Watchers, I believe, is where this could possibly originate. Uh, okay. Which is from California. Okay, okay. And the Dark Watchers, as they have become to be known, are apparently giant human-like phantoms that are only seen at twilight, 
standing silhouetted against the night sky along the ridges and peaks of the mountain range. Now, I know that's oh. going to bring your mind immediately to something else. I'll touch back on it. Oh. Yeah. I've definitely heard of this before. Yeah. I, uh, I can't... Mm-hmm. Did you know that in Super Mario Galaxy, there's just shadow people watching you? No. On one that's level? Cool. Yeah. It's pretty wild. Yeah. I'll, I'll look it up for, to show yeah. you later. Uh, one spot of these beings are usually seen staring off into the open air of the mountains, seemingly at nothing in particular before vanishing into thin air or occasionally right before the spectator's eyes. Who or what the watchers are, no one knows. Where they came from or why they are there, again, are lost in speculation. And what they're looking for or watching is beyond anyone's current comprehension. The, ooh, I got a link. You don't have to, you don't have to look at it right now, just for later. Okay. Uh, the Chumash Indians first spoke of them in the legends, and their cave painters drew them in their colorful wall drawings. Later, legendary author John Steinbeck described them in his story Flight as uh, Pepe looked up to the top of the next dry, withered ridge. He saw a dark form against the sky, a man's figure standing on top of a rock, and he glanced away quickly, not to appear, appear curious. When a moment later, he looked up again, the figure was gone. So and did John Steinbeck know about the Dark Watchers then? John Steinbeck did know about the Dark Watchers. Did okay. we do the Sinky Sink? I forget. I think we did at the very, very beginning. Okay. Yeah, we did, because I, I have a mark point, so that means we did. Okay, good. I can't... Oh, I'm so bad at working technology. I... Whatever. The full screen. Do, uh, I'll live with it as is. Uh, also, in 1937, the poet... Robinson uh, Jeffers mentioned them in his poem, Such Counsels You Gave to Me, as, quote, forms that look human, but certainly are not human. If Jeffers or Steinbeck ever actually saw one of the Watchers is sort of unknown, but the local legend has been around since long before they wrote about it. Mm -hmm. In the mid-60s, the uh, uh, Monterey Peninsula local... Uh, who was the past principal of a local high school, saw them while hiking in the mountains. He had enough time to study the dark figure and to see that it's clothing and notice uh, how the figure was strangely studying the mountains. When the principal called out to his fellow hikers, the figure disappeared. Mm. Mm-hmm. Spooky. Spooky. Oh, this reminds me of uh, the... Past episode? Are you going to oh, name a past episode? Oh yeah! I'm going to touch now, that on that later. Now so, I'm starting. Now so I'm starting to see what you're talking about. This okay. version of the shadow people remind me very much of our episode where we talked about the um, gray man of uh, Ben McDewey. Yeah, uh, the Ainflel Moore or whatever. Yeah, the Amphirlath Moore. And That's it. That uh, this version is interesting because it's also different from. Um, what I had originally thought I would be learning about when I started doing some research on Shadow People. Also, if people are interested in hearing the other episode, it's episode 11, Shadow of the Shadow Lossus. Uh, the topic is the Amphir Lythmore of Scotland. Yeah, that that's literally once you started talking about a dude seeing something dark approaching him and then it suddenly disappears as he gets closer. That's like literally point for point the yeah. like description of that creature. Oh, yeah. Other So other more recent sightings have included a dark hat and cape in the description of the mountain residing phantoms. Many what? Pe- yeah, so he's just got like a dark... like I'm, I'm picturing a top hat and a cape, to be fair. <laughs> like a giant with a top hat and a cape. Fucking tuxedo mask. Yeah. <laughs> just... <laughs> I'm here to save you, sailor. Wait. Where the, where, where'd they go? Oh. Okay. Yeah. There's, uh, never mind. I'm not even going to ask the question. So, some of the sightings come from, uh, these are, fr- I forget the name of the website, but I took these from a website where they collected a bunch of sightings of these creatures. Michael of Thousand Oaks, California, in 2019, so this year, said that, uh, I've camped a few times in the Santa Lucia Mountains near Cone Peak, right near the coastline, and, uh, we were coming up on some of the coastal ridges there overlooking the ocean and definitely experienced some very strange energy. My first time up there, there were three of us, including myself. One person and myself both actually spotted one of the watchers up on a high ridge, particularly obscured by low flying clouds. Neither of us were familiar with them uh, at this time and choked up, uh, sorry. Chalked it. 
Oh, chalked it up to a tree. When we slept the night, we felt an indiscriminable, indis- uh, bad words, indescribable discomfort and decided to keep driving north the next morning. So if they were camping, I can tell them what the indescribable discomfort was. It's camping. <laughs> it's describable. It's That's describable fair. in one word. Camping. Yeah. Camping is indescribable yeah. discomfort. You know why? Because your sleeping bag is either way too hot or way too cold. I was more thinking about the rocks underneath you. Even with a foam pad, you can still feel a rock if there's a rock. Oh, yeah. You you know that whole Princess of the Princess and the Pea stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Imagine that just times a thousand because rocks. Rocks. I hate rocks. I I hated camping as a Boy Scout. Oh, I can believe it. Not only that, but our tents were like old tents. So it was yeah. like, ugh, the worst. Oh, yeah. Uh, Anonymous of Stockton, California said that today my boyfriend and I are driving from the Arroyo Grande to Stockton about an hour outside of AG. We saw a dark human figure in the hills. It was several hundred yards away from the road and seemed to be trudging laboriously uphill in the 90 degree sun. Uh, Despite rubbernecking multiple times to try to get a better look, we could distinguish no identifying marks. No seams of clothing, no hints of shoes or anything. <clears throat> wait, 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 whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. I, okay, no seams of clothing? Yeah, I don't know who looks for the seams of the clothes. I try to look for the shirt, not the stitching. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Uh, there was a small station with a tank and satellite on the opposite side of the road. I wonder if we didn't see some strange ritual. Or you just saw some dude walking from the station and back. Yeah, like who... <laughs> like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yeah. but Occam's Razor does apply. Yes, it does. Uh, so Joey of Silmar, California says that I'm a long-distance runner. Most of my training is up in the good old California mountains. I had a long run scheduled, so I headed out. I headed to the Veterans Park here in San Fernando Valley. Uh, time of day was 2 p.m., I was running up in the area, excuse me, where no human could climb without gear, and I saw a black figure in plain daylight. I never seen anything like it up in the mountain. It was darker than dark, and he could not explain it. A year passed, and today, on January 24th, I saw it again in the same spot. Uh, I feel like if it's in the same spot. Yeah. Like, uh, I don't know. Like, You're seeing some red flags. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of there's a lot of red flags being thrown up by this story where I'm just like, okay, that could be all these things so far can be explained by something mundane. Oh, yeah. No, 100 percent. They could be. Um, That's the difficulty with something that's literally a shadow person because it's a person. Oh, yeah. Right. It could just be a person. Oh, The uh, Coast to Coast AM late night radio talk show helped popularize the modern beliefs uh, in shadow people. The first time the topic of shadow people was discussed at length on the show was April 12th, 2001, when then host Art Bell interviewed Native American elder Thunderstrikes, who is also known as Hurley Swifty or Regan. So during the show, listeners were encouraged to submit drawings of the shadow people that they had seen. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, it's a radio show, but did you do that? Did you do that? No, no, that was there the whole time. Did, you did that? No, no, that was all. That, that was, was there all the whole you. time. No, that was That's there the whole time. You. That was always there. Then why is the cursor there? What cursor? I don't know what you're talking about. What are you talking about? There's no cursor. During the show, <laughs> listeners, <laughs> I can't get over that. We're it cur- looks okay. Oh, okay, so yeah. Brandon had a picture. I assume from the show or just a general picture of a shadow person. Yeah. And it, it's standing almost exactly like SpongeBob from that one episode was like, and he's in the loincloth. So it's like, it's perfect. It's a little bit perfect. (laughs) It's a little bit too perfect. It's in the, it's in the episode copy for patron listeners. Oh yeah. So during the show, listeners were encouraged to submit drawings of shadow people Uh, that they'd seen and a large number of these drawings were immediately shared uh, publicly on the website. Oh, that's so weird to think about a website in 2001. Yeah. Uh, We have to, we have to cover coast to coast AM on an episode 
Like, oh yeah, that's such a just as a general overview because that's such a weirdly it's such a hallmark of supernatural and paranormal thinking. Oh, it is. Yeah, and it's so credulous for everything. Mm-hmm. My favorite still has to be the Area 51 episode, the uh, Area 51 call. Yes. With, I think Art Bell was the guy who was helming Coast to Coast when that happened. No, I think you're uh, I think you're correct. Yeah, that's such a good call. Listen to it yeah. if you get a chance. It's totally worth a listen. Like it's totally also, worth a listen. It's also completely fake. Oh yeah. 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 So just like cuz the dude who did the call came out later. And, yeah. like, did an interview. It was totally uh, fake. So, regardless. Uh, okay. So, in October of that year, Heidi Hollis published her first book on the topic of shadow people and later became a regular guest on the Coast to Coast show. Hollis described shadow people as dark silhouettes with human shapes and profiles that flicker in and out of peripheral vision. Um, and she also claims that people have resorted... Uh, reported the figures attempting to jump on their chest and choke them. She believes mm-hmm. the figures to be negative alien beings uh, that can be repelled by various means, including invoking the name of Jesus. So we're jumping to some conclusions, making some assumptions uh, right there. God. That's that's a leap. That's a leap right there. That's somebody who has an agenda. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. I'm going to quickly Google this individual. Oh, okay. I have a mental picture of what this her- person looks like. Uh-huh. Oh, wasn't really what I was imagining. No? No. She looks different than my, my mental picture. Uh, Are you saying normal? Mm, I'm not going to say normal. I, I feel like you got to look at least a little... You have to be a little bit weird to be in uh, the paranormal spheres. Yeah. Because, I mean, I, I'll be the first to tell you I look weird. Her website's interesting. She has comics. Oh, okay. I mean, that's. I guess that's who I thought. I didn't really picture that. I was picturing someone different. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, boy. Yeah. What's that's that about? A, that's a weird book cover. Oh, fun. The other F word. How to find faith. Okay. The Hat Man Book 2. A guide in comics on how to get rid of dark beings for all ages. Thanks. Let's add that to our our, uh, book list. Let's let's one make up a reading list, a book list, and just add that to it. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) Oh. I... This, oh my god, if you look inside it, it's even worse. I mean, it's free on Kindle. Uh, if you have... Oh god, I hate oh, it. Oh, wow. I hate okay. it. I don't want to give this money. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't want to give that money of any kind. That's fine. Well, free on Kindle, no money. Well, but it might give him... I don't know. That's... <laughs> that's, that's yeah, I don't know. That's weird. Anywho. <laughs> I gotta drink some water. Ah, refreshing water. <clears throat> so they're believed to be evil and aggressive in nature, although few people consider them to be a form of guardian angel. Mm-hmm. A shadow person's behavior tends to vary, suggesting that they might be varied as regular people. Some report that when looked at in the chest or eyes, they emit a loud scream that sounds very screechy and static. Loud wind what? or creaking wood. That's weird. They often cause their victims to feel unable to move and stare at them in silence, rarely ever speaking. Sometimes they will even sit on their chests. Many are spotted within hospitals or otherwise near those who are dying. Now, here's the question. Who's spotting them? Yeah. Like, like is it somebody who's sick or is it somebody who's fully well? Because that, that's important. That is important. Uh, so one commonly seen shadow person is the hat man who has been reported worldwide with very few variations in overall appearance and behavior. In appearance, the hat man is solid, a uh, solid black man, sometimes with a red or black eyes and a wide rimmed hat, usually reported to be either a Zorro hat or a fedora and a now long those, trench coat. 
those are some those are two fairly different hats. Yes, they are. If you see those in person, they're fairly different. Yeah. Uh, he is generally seen uh, as much more physically solid. He is sometimes reported to have a goatee or be clean shaven. Some reports claim that he has no face at all. So, if he's solid black, these details are not easy to see. No. So, like, there's a part of me that's kind of like, are you sure you're not just seeing a dude who's kind of weird wearing an all black outfit? Yeah. Uh, those who see the hat man report feeling a sense of malevolence coming from him. And I've never he- seen someone in a fedora who hadn't felt a sense of malevolence coming off of. That's a fair statement. Yeah. Just want to point that out. I think oh, it's yeah. the more than anything else. I think it's the fedora. Oh yeah. The only human being in history who has carried a, has worn a fedora and I haven't felt malevolence coming off of is uh-huh. Indiana Jones. True, true, true. Also, that's a fedora, not a trilby, which people uh, mess up a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he seems to show curiosity towards witnesses. He seems to take great pleasure from the fear of the witnesses, and some have gone as far to say that he is the devil. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay, good, good, good. So, um, question. Yes. How, how is any of this, has any of this been recorded as anything worthwhile? No, not really. Like, even a little bit. Yeah. No. Just no. Okay. All the recorded stuff is, like, what you and I would have seen from, like, TV shows on sci-fi. Like, back in the day where it's more like they set up a laser grid on a bridge and they're looking for, like, points of lasers. And they're not... So, this version of Shadow People, they're all giants for whatever reason, which I was sort of unaware of. um, Because I had more of the... I don't even want to call it East Coast. Just the normal version, whatever I thought Shadow People were. That's what I thought this Mm -hmm. was going to be about. And not these large figures. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever heard of the large figure version of the Shadow People. There's outside this... of... Well, I'll get into it. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'm going to yeah. touch back on what we did in uh, episode 11 in a little bit. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, as far as what this could be, there are several explanations for the giant humanoid. Uh, and I'll refer back to episode 11 about the gray man of Ben Gay or the Amphir Lyth Moore, where... <laughs> ben Gay. Yeah. In 1791, Scottish poet James Hogg was out taking care of his sheep when he had his first encounter with the gray man. He recounted that it was a giant blackamoor at least 30 feet high and equally proportioned and very near me. Uh, I was actually struck powerless with astonishment and terror. However, he returned the next day, and when he did, this time he decided to perform some experiments. He removed his hat and made other gestures, and he observed that the giant specter did the same thing that he did. James left content that what he was actually seeing was his own shadow, um, and what James saw, uh, and very likely many others, is what is called a broken specter, sometimes called a mountain specter, and uh, those are uh, the magnified shadow of the observer cast upon clouds on the opposite side of the sun's direction. Yeah, that, that kind of sounds more like what the shadow people phenomena is to me. Yeah, specifically like this version that I'm just learning about. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. The, the, the Dark Watchers really sounds an awful lot like this. Yeah, no, very much so. Um, So the phenomena can appear on any misty uh, mountainside or cloud bank, uh, even when seen from an airplane. But the frequent flogs and words... um, I can probably skip this part. Basically, they're saying, like, the mists along the mountains provide very good conditions for your shadow to be cast just sort of in the air where you can observe it. I mean, the the one story literally said that it was like um, that the the low low hanging clouds were covering it. Yeah. So so a lot of the sightings describe conditions where a broken specter could very likely be an explanation for these. Yeah, like um, very easily, especially like a mountain specter because this is all in the mountains. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as uh, the figures like jumping on chests and the such there are several uh physiological and psychological conditions that can account for the reported uh, experiences of shadowy shapes seeming to be alive 
Uh, a sleep, par- sleep paralysis sufferer may perceive a shadowy or indistinct shape approaching them when they lie awake paralyzed and become increasingly alarmed. Uh, a person experiencing a heightened emotion, uh, such as while walking alone in the dark, may incorrectly perceive a patch of shadow as an attacker. And yeah. many methamphetamine addicts report the appearance <laughs> of shadow people after prolonged <laughs> periods of sleep deprivation. Uh, Good lord. Yeah, psychiatrist Jack Potts suggested that the methamphetamine, methamphetamine usage adds a conspiratorial component uh, to the sleep-deprived hallucinations. Uh, one interviewed subject said that you don't see shadow dogs or shadow birds or shadow cars. You see shadow people standing in doorways, walking behind you, coming at you in the dark. And these hallucinations have been directly compared to the paranormal entities described in folklore. I mean, except I've definitely heard of people talking about shadow dogs and shadow birds and shadow animals. and like. Have you outside of like that demon uh, hound that, that we had in that one episode? No, I've, I've heard of it. Like I've heard stories. Like Some of the things that scare me the most were stuff like that. Because okay. that's that is more scary to me for whatever reason. I don't I don't know why it's more shadow scary dogs. to me. Yeah. yeah, like that's more scary to me than a shadow person. Yeah, because I don't know. It just I I I I don't I don't know. Maybe maybe because I'm not as af- maybe I'm just not as afraid of people like at my maybe. core. I don't know. Or the- maybe there's something more. Maybe it triggers something more in my uh, my lizard brain. Yeah, you know where it's like, oh no, you've got to be afraid of that because that's that's something that hunted your ancestors, and yeah. as a result, the people who were afraid of it instinctively are the ones who made it. So yeah. I, I don't know. So I watched a movie last night called uh, Bullet. Well, I watched a bunch of movies last night, but I watched uh, one called. Bullethead that had John Malkovich and I wasn't sure how they're going to pull off the movie yeah. because the entire movie is John Malkovich and Macaulay Culkin's brother in a warehouse what? and there's a scary dog and that's the plot of the whole movie is just they're trapped in a warehouse with a dog and um, it was like a horror I get well, it was a thriller type of movie it was supposed to be and I was wondering how they're going to pull that off and uh, one the dog the whole time I was like oh like I was like oh is a is a is a pit bull but the whole time I was like I just want to pet the dog, and then it turns out the answer is just all flashbacks. Uh, okay. Yeah. So pit bulls are actually really good dogs, from what I've heard. They are. My mom wants a pit so bad. They're like really, 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 really sweet dogs, from what I've heard. All animals are friends. Well, all hmm. animals are friends as long as they have two to four legs. <laughs> God damn it. Now, wait a second. Chickens aren't friends. Chickens Actually, can be friends. Chickens can uh, be friends. Ducks, geese are not friends. Canadian geese are, geese not, are friends. not friends. And geese they have are two not legs. friends. They are not friends. They do not like you. They don't like anyone. They're hate beings. They are. They used to attack me when I was at my parents' house. Yeah, they've got little. they've got they've got hate tubes. They have hate tubes. That's They're just neck. angry. They're hate tubes. Next, I remember my tubes. dad set up like a cage trap, and he caught a bunch of them and like drove them out to a field and just let them go because they're just being so mean. They're nasty little bastards. Yeah, they're gnarly. Yeah, but. Long pause. You got distracted. That's fair. Yeah, I got distracted. My my, I got I got linked to Megazords on eBay, and now I'm just looking at Megazords because I like to look at Megazords periodically. Because that's, that's you don't have to explain that to me. I know that. Yeah, I everyone just, else I, listening knows that already too. Yeah. Well, I don't talk about Power Rangers as much. To be fair, that's true. I I but with Power Rangers, I pretty much only am in. I'm such a mecha guy i just like yeah. robots oh i only got two episodes into um to like, me too Game busters but like it's so like it's got them them trigun vibes i just want to let you know like i legit yeah. like that show it's a good show it, it's super duper got trigun vibes also yeah. the main character looks like if spike was crossed with vash was crossed with oh yeah 
uh, the guy from Outlaw Star. It's yeah. like it's like four different characters from the old days of 90s anime and yeah. early aughts just molded together. And he's a great character. What's his name? Um, Philly the Kid. Yeah. 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 It's great. Also made by the guy who made the boondocks. I did not know that. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, not animated by the people who animated the boondocks, though, unfortunately. Yeah, shit. I know what I'm going to watch right after we finish this, after I do laundry and shower and go to Los. Yeah. I got to go to Hannaford. Uh. <laughs> All right. So so we can go be adults. I'm going to close uh, this podcast out. Okay. Um, as always, if you want to get in contact with us, uh, our website is cryptopediacast.com. Our Instagram is at cryptopediacast. And our Twitter is also at CryptopediaCast. Our email is CryptopediaCast at gmail.com and, or us at CryptopediaCast.com. We have a Patreon, which is in the show notes. Um, you get various rewards, and you can check that out on the Patreon site, uh, including access to the, the show notes. Um, if you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, share with your friends, all that good stuff. Um we are hitting episode 52 next week. Um, didn't mention it last episode, but there are going to be some changes coming to Cryptopedia, and we're mm-hmm. going to discuss them on that episode. Yes. Not bad, but things to improve Brandon and I's quality of life. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> that's all it is. Yeah. Uh, if you have any monster requests or stories, be sure to send them in. Uh I have the feeling we're going to be switching to some bigger topics in the near future. Okay. Uh, at the very least, I am. Yeah. Because of some of the aforementioned uh, format changes. Um, but that's about all I got for Cryptopedia. All right. If you'd like, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon. Uh, if you want to get in contact with me at Mew2057 on Instagram at JF Dunham on Twitter, website is johndunhamgames.com, and my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com, and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. 